Hello, my name is Ryan Tacey, and I'd like to welcome you to Painting with Ryan Tacey. That's me. That's my name, Ryan Tacey. If this is your first time joining us, I'd like to extend a personal invitation to you and your friends to go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and absolutely obliterate that notification bell. Thank you, and now let's begin with some happy little paintings. Ready? <clears throat> okay, what we're going to do is we're doing painting, but just, hi, how are you? We got to get this door painted, but we've never painted anything before. But we still want to make it look presentable. So tips and tricks. So I, I actually uh, painted for a while. So if I'm going to attack this door, I'm going to start with this panel, and then I'm going to come in, I'm going to come around in like this. So first thing that I will say is... The guy that taught me how to paint told me to always maintain a wet edge. And what he meant by that will be clear as I start to paint. So I can just kind of start with a, I jab the paintbrush down in and sort of pull it back from the corners. Okay, and this is just a first coat, so I'm kind of not concerned about coverage so much. And then, now, that looks like crap, right? But if you start here and pull back through like that, see how all those brush marks disappear? Cool, right? So you basically, meh, 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 whatever, no big deal. You're kind of just being kind of crazy with it, right? It doesn't really matter. But then as long as you're starting from a nice clean area and pulling back into it, you can eliminate those brush strokes. So now, I'm transitioning to a place where I don't want to keep pulling from here to flatten everything out. Instead, I'm going to kind of come in like this. I'll do a little bit of a bit like this. Now, when he says always maintain a wet edge, what I mean is I methodically go down like this and then I come up like this so that if the piece that I'm working on here is fresh, I want to get to the oldest piece up here so that I can start working on that before it dries. So now you see all those brush marks. Every time I start in the wet and come that way, I leave a brush mark. But if I start in the dry, pull back and lift off, I don't leave brush marks. Just kind of get it on there to get it on there and then come back through. And as you're coming back through the part that you just painted, you lift the brush off the top. And because this is a first coat, I don't care that it's not completely covering. I'm okay with that. I'm going to come back and do a second coat. You're never going to get something like this coated. So in these corners, see, I grab a little paint right on the end of the brush like that. And I just kind of tap it right into that corner and then pull it back here, pull it back here. I keep dripping all over the piece here. In like that, pull it back. In like that, pull it back and pull it back. Just jab in the front, the front there. Get that bit covered and then now I got all these brush marks but it's still nice and wet and you know even though it's evenly spread out I can come back starting that little bit right there where it's gonna be hidden the brush mark now so we got the panel mostly painted now we want to work on the outer frame and so what you'll notice is the frame is built with these two Rails and styles, so rails this way, styles this way. Styles starting in here, you can see these little gaps, these little seams here. So when you paint a door like this, you're always gonna start at that seam at the bottom and paint like I just said, start, you know. Once you got that first bit started, you kinda just get it on there and then you pull back through to flatten it out and get rid of those marks. Now I'm up to this other edge and I'm just gonna do the same thing here that I did on the other side. Boom, like that. And then, cause they're still wet, I'm maintaining that wet edge. I can still come back in and brush through it. Now that's janky and that kind of looks crappy too, but we'll deal with those in a minute. Come outside, pull back in, pull back in. You've eliminated all your brush marks there and then you can handle the rails. So starting on the outside coming in and see how I'm just flaring that brush out just like that to the edge of that.
pull it right back up, it now matches the brush stroke with the way the wood is jointed together. And then I can just continue, boom, get that front edge, keep that front edge wet, always maintain a wet edge. And now here I'm in that same position where I'm at the end. So I have two options. I can either do this, which ends up creating a bead here that I gotta wipe off, or I can feather in that way, just let that brush drop while it's moving and not leave a mark and do it the same way. Either way, whatever works for you, that works for me. On this side, same kind of an approach. Start there, let that just feather itself out like that and match that joint. Like so, I'm gonna kind of make a mess of it because I don't really care. I'm coming back through to feather it out like that. And at the end here, again, I can come in this way and feather it, or I can, you can see it easier here. If I come in that way, it often creates that drip right there. Now I gotta deal with that drip that way, that way, or you can drop down onto it and boom, like that. Ha ha, there you go. All right, so we, we did the painting. And everybody hates this part, but you actually still have to clean the brush. You gotta clean the brush, it's necessary. And these things are expensive. Like one of these brushes is like 15 bucks, easy, right? So take care of them and they will take care of you. Welcome to the murder closet. I mean, janitorial room. Janitorial room. All right. Please join me at the corner slop sink. First thing you gotta remember is that the bristles go that way. That's kind of key. So I always actually start with good warm water. All right. And first thing you're gonna wanna do is just get your thumbs in there and work the paint out. The further up, the longer you've been painting, the further up that paint is. So if you get your thumbs in there and just kind of work that out that way, kind of spread those bristles out. Don't go too crazy with it because you don't want to bend and wreck all of your bristles in your brush. But if you can go like that and kind of get the majority of it out that way, that way if you've got any like dried up bits along here, you can kind of get your fingernail in there and, you know, do it like that a little bit. So once you got the majority of it out, then it becomes just an exercise in painting. So I always, that's that motion right there, starting to fan it out and then curve it, right? And kind of boom, like that. It's the most efficient way that I've found to be able to get, and see how quickly that was? I mean, that's, that brush is now, I mean, there's no more paint coming out of there. That's just clear water coming out of it. Once we're done with that, I'll give it a shake to kind of get the water out, get the majority of it out. Some people like to, you know, whatever. Right? If you want to. And then I just kind of squeeze it between my fingers like that to get that shape back that it likes. And then, because it wants to flare when you do that, so you kind of have to square it up a little bit like that. Like so, and if you leave your brush to dry like that, then the next time you go to use it, it's not gonna be all at the end and crappy. So, clean the brush. Make sure you do well. Preserve your brushes for a long time. And I will be happy. Like, subscribe, do it. Just hit the notification bell. Come on, you can do it. Just push it, hit it. Push it real good.